What's up, guys? Pastor Seth here. Hi, guys. It's Pam. So, this is weird. We haven't done this in a <laughs> long time. You guys, how many remember uh, the whole 2020 COVID thing where we did this every single week for almost two years, actually? Really so, I'm grateful that we don't have to do this every week, but I'm also grateful that we get to do I this. I wish I could do it every week with you. Oh, that's, that's nice. That's what you said earlier. But anyway, <laughs> Um, and so, in case you didn't notice, we are online today because we got first snowfall of the year and first snowfall really of the season. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, so we are looking forward to the message uh, on our series Fresh Start, which Pastor Gerald kicked off last week. It was awesome. Um, and just talking about all things new. And so we got a great message for you today. And I want to encourage you and challenge you to come in person next week. Um, and we are kicking off really sharing with you some incredible vision that we have as uh, as a pastors and leaders of the church for restoration for Mount self Sullivan County. You want to be part of next week's service and guarantee it. And it's just lay out the direction of where we're going for this year and years to come. Uh, Sullivan County has no idea what's coming. Uh, we are so excited for that. But join us next week for that. But today, the message you're here is awesome for what you're going through. Talk about first things first. First what first. matters most, right? You know, and so as we get in that idea, that subject, in just a few moments, it's a question for you, and we'd love for you to drop off in the comments, you know, and just participate with us here. Um, is are you a person like are you team New Year's resolutions okay. or you team like yeah no it's not happening because I never keep them in the year and that's a long hashtag but you know what I'm saying. So where are you, Pam? Are you? I'm gonna say no. I'm sorry. I'm not. A so you don't make resolutions? I'm not really. No. No. No goals. No I've vision. Got, in your no life. vision. No goals. Go with the flow. You know, kind of just do Bible says without <laughs> vision, people, <laughs> people die. die. I know. Yeah, so I am a person of I vision. I know, you are a person of vision. And dreams sure. and goals. And I think, listen, I understand the whole idea that people don't put resolutions uh, because, like, I'm just going to break it. So make your resolution that I'm going to break a resolution. And then if you don't break it, do you keep you it? I don't know. I just really, I, so you find yourself in Catch-22 there. But drop it in. If you make a New Year's resolution, let us know. Give us a thumbs up emoji. Right, sure. And yeah. Oh, so then maybe if I see one that I really like, maybe I'll try yeah. it. Yeah, feel free to share if you feel like sharing. Be you're like, hey, I'm going to share so I'm going to get some accountability. Like, I'm I'm not going to eat more potato chips this year. You know, I don't know how many times I've told I myself like that. there's anything that I need to do to myself. You are perfect. But for the rest of us, they're not perfect. You know, I'm sure we all have days of work on dropping off. We'd love right. to hear Drop from it you. On. I see what you. Is it a health to thing? Is it a spiritual thing? We're going to be talking about that today. Um, you know, are you trying to grow in your relationship with Jesus? By the way, we just dropped our new soap um, devotion guide. So for January, February, March. So if you go to rechurch.tv slash soap, you can soap with us. And also, we'll have announcements right after this. So you know what's going on here, restoration. But next Sunday, as well, after following our service, we have our discovery party. Right. So if you're looking to get on and join us here at Restoration, serve on a dream team, or whatever, whatever next step that you're looking for, discovery is your on-ramp. It's there your you next go. step. So sign up today. Your you next go New Year's resolution. That's it. You go research.tv slash discover and sign up today and join us next week. We'll provide lunch for you. It's Ooh. a it's a party, man. You know, and it's helping you find your people, your place, and your purpose. Perfect. Right. So sure. love to see you guys next Sunday on that. So drop in. New Year's resolutions. New you don't have any? Nope. Maybe, I don't know. So I do, I'm, I'm trying to eat better. Okay. Yes. yes. That's oh, that's true. That's always a good resolution. So I do need to eat better. I go to the gym every day, you know, so I do that stuff. And um, and so, but, so physically, I got that habit going. Junior Mints. It's refreshing. It's chocolate. It's very refreshing. Yes. So um, what's your new resolution? Um, we are doing a Daniel Pass coming up on January 22nd. No, you got time. You can eat oh, all okay. your stuff you want now. January 22nd, 10 day Daniel Fast. Uh, we'll be talking more about that as well. Um, again, reach out to Daniel Fast. There's a lot of things happening. There's a I'm lot excited. of things taking place. We're I think our ladies, we'll be doing our ladies' thing. Sisterhood, yeah. <laughs> What's up? Yep. You know, and we are Brotherhood. And we're okay. meeting this Saturday, 8 30 at the church for our men's Bible study. And we're going through the book of Hebrews. Nice. Yeah. You know, what kind of uh, coffee or how does Moses like this coffee? Oh, Hebrews. Hebrews. Yeah. Anyway, so join us as we get ready to worship and have some announcements, and then we got our message coming up. So get yourself a cup of coffee. 
Get your family together. Enjoy. All right, we'll see you guys next week. God bless you guys. Make those resolutions. Drop it in the comments. All right, we'll talk to you later. Peace. Bye, guys. Morning Restoration. We are glad that you're here. Welcome home. And if you're watching online, thank you for joining us today. Our mission is simply to lead people to become fully engaged followers of Jesus. If this is your very first time here, 
we just want to say that we are honored to have you. We would love to give you a gift as a simple way to say thank you. Just fill out a connection card and drop it off at our guest services table. Or you can place the card in one of our giving boxes as well. At Discovery, we will help you discover three things. Your place, your people, and your God-given purpose. Our Discovery parties are uniquely designed with you in mind. Here at Restoration Church, we believe that God has a purpose for every one of us to live. Discovery is strategically planned to equip you to take your next steps and become everything that God wants for you to be. Discovery focuses on the culture and mission of restoration while helping you discover your place, people, and God-given purpose. So sign up for your next Discovery Party happening on Sunday, January 14th at rechurch.tv slash discover. Striving to get closer to God? Join us for our 10-day Daniel Fast starting on January 22nd. Fasting is a spiritual discipline designed to connect us more deeply with God. Fasting involves giving up something physical for the sake of something spiritual. Get more information and sign up for daily devotions and challenges throughout the Daniel Fast at rechurch.tv slash Daniel Fast. We believe life is better together and our regroups are the perfect place to build intentional relationships with others while growing in your relationship with Jesus. Join us this Wednesday, January 3rd, as we kick off a study in the book of Colossians. Colossians looks at Jesus being the fullness of God and that anyone who is in Jesus already has received that fullness in him. This study is sure to challenge and encourage you as we simply do life together in our re community groups. Find out more at rechurch.tv slash regroups. And as always, thank you for your continued generosity as we live to give here at Restoration. You can give in person today using our giving boxes or online at rechurch.tv slash give. Thanks again for joining us today as we truly do believe that life is better together. Hey, what's up, Restoration? Pastor Seth here. Thank you so much for joining us here online as we are kicking off the new year, 2024. And there's a lot of firsts happening today. This is our first significant snowfall of the season. Um, and this is actually the first Sunday of 2024. So again, thank you so much for joining us. As we get started today, I wanna to ask you a question. Feel free to answer in the comments below, but what kind of year was 2023 for you spiritually? Think about that for a second. What kind of year would you say 2023 was for you spiritually? Uh, was it spiritually apathetic, really meaning that it was non-existent, so you didn't think too much about it? Uh, was it spiritually inconsistent? You know, you had your highs and your lows, your mountaintops and your valleys, or would you say that you were spiritually consumed for 2023? Meaning you weren't perfect, but you spent the majority of the year pursuing your relationship with God. See, wherever you fall in that, perhaps you were spiritually consumed. I encourage you in 2024, continue that growth with God on your day-to-day -day walk with Him. If you're spiritually inconsistent, I would challenge you right now to be more consistent in your walk. And if you are spiritually apathetic, really not having much of a thought process about your relationship with God, that today you will declare and determine that 2024 is going to be the year that you truly evaluate and look at your spirituality and what God has for you this year. And so as we get started and talking about first, the first snowfall, the first Sunday, I want to talk about what the Bible does for us, that we need to focus us and prioritize first. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 30, 33, it says this. It says, but seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, 
and all these things will be given you as well. So as we enter into the new year, I'm going to encourage you to seek God first. Spiritually apathetic, seek God. Spiritually consistent, seek God. Spiritually consumed, continue to seek God. Seek him first. And we need to prioritize God in everything we do. Prioritize him in our family, in our relationships, in, 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 in our workplace. Whatever you're doing this year, whatever God's called you to do, whatever purpose he's put you on this planet for, I encourage and challenge you to seek God first in all things. It's the main thing. It's what we need to focus on. And it will truly change you and your relationship with him and your relationship with others. Pastor Chris Bell said this, it's not just what we offer to God, but the order in which we offer it. So it's not just a matter of what you're giving to God, but in what order. As we look throughout the scriptures, it's really a matter of putting God first. You prioritize him, giving him our very best. We see that at the very beginning of Cain and Abel. And Abel gave God his very best, but Cain did not. And because he wasn't faithful and he didn't do what God had called him to do and then offered the way he was supposed to, he accepted Abel's sacrifice, but not Cain's. And this year, I want you to be blessed in so many ways and so many different paths of your life. So we need to do that by giving God our very best. It's not necessarily what we offer, but in the order in which we offer it. Are you giving God your very best? Or are you giving him your leftovers? Are you giving your marriage the very best? Or are you giving it whatever you have left in the tank? Are you giving your kids the very best? Or you're absent in most of their life? We need to be able to offer and give our very best in every situ situation that we can and possibly can do. So let me give you some things that we need to put first things first. Keeping the main thing the main thing. The first is this. The first of the day, seek God. First of the day, seek God. Now I understand, you know, not all of you are early birds. You know, some of you, you know, your, your idea of being up early is by noon, right? But... Whatever your day starts, whenever it starts, if it's a five o'clock in the morning type deal, or it's 11 o'clock in the morning, or it's three o'clock in an afternoon, I encourage and challenge you to seek God first, the first part of your day to spend time with Him. Again, it's the order of we offer things. If we start our day with God, everything else falls in line. Psalm 63 1 says, Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I encourage you to seek God first, to prioritize him. And see, this is important. So we put God first. Well, this is what happens. When we don't put God first, it's just like anything else in our life. We get busy and our intentions may be good but we end up not doing what we want to do because life truly gets in the way. Things happen. And so if you want something and it's important to you, you're going to put it first in your agenda and, and the very first part of your day to make sure that that gets taken care of and everything else falls in place. If you're like me, I like going to the gym, but I know if I don't go first thing in the morning, that I'm not going because I got kids to take care of. I'm at the house. I'm with my wife. I got ministry. I got this and that. And by the time that my day is, you know, the evening, whatever, it's spent. I'm, I don't have anything to give at the gym. So for me, I go first thing. So I can get, it's important to me. And then it's done. And then everything else falls in place. See God first. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. It says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark. Some of you don't know what dark looks like in the morning. But while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Just follow example like Jesus. If there's any resolution or goal that you can put in place for 2024, I'd say make your simple resolution in this. Say, I want to be more like Jesus. Well, Jesus got up early. He started off this morning in prayer, spending time with his heavenly father. I encourage you to do the same. See, when God is first in our lives, everything comes into order. When God is not first, everything is out of order. It's chaos. And so when your life is going and you're just at your wits end and you don't understand, there's a good chance that you didn't start off that day with God. 
Now, I'm not saying when you do start your day off with God that everything's going to be okay, you know, and that, you know, it's going to be the best day ever, but you'll have the strength that you gain that morning, spending time with him to get through those storms, those things that come up that you did not expect. So first of the day, seek God. The second thing, and first things first, and what matters most, the main thing is the first of the week is worship. I love what we do here on Sunday mornings, and it's killing me that we can't be in person today. But I love that we can do this online and that we still can come and worship together. I love what's been happening at Restoration the past few months. We've been having a packed house, and we're being seeing people say yes to Jesus left and right, like reaching one person at a time. That's what it's all about. And so I encourage you the first of the week to prioritize to worship, to be in a local church, to spend time together, gather together together, worshiping together, being challenged together, holding each other accountable, encouraging one another, just laughing together. Life is truly better together. So the first of the week, worship in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, it says, on the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Now, we might not break bread every week, but we pour coffee, right? You know, and there's some treats in the cafe, and there's, there's, there's stories to share. We break bread together when we come together. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says, So let us not give up to meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. It's very easy to skip church and, 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 and prioritize something else. And so we need to be intentional about doing what God's called us to do and to come together. Let's not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let's encourage one another. It's encouraging to be together in the house of God. See, worship isn't something that we should do. It actually should be a lifestyle. It should be just part of what we do and reflective of everything else that falls in place. So the first of the day, you're spending time with God. The first of the week, you're in God's house together, getting ready for the week. And that's how we do first things first. That's how we keep the main thing the main thing. Then as we see God the first of the day and as we worship the first of the week, I encourage you the first of the month, or the, the, your free, when you get your paycheck or whatever case is to tithe, to, to, to give back the way God's called us to give. In Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30, it says, A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. Listen, we have one of the most generous churches that I, I've ever been a part of, and I appreciate you guys left and right. And we couldn't do what we do without your generosity. But we don't give because we have to. We give because we get to give. And so when we give and, and, and the tithe, really, if you look at it, it's 10%. And then, you know, that's a tithe and the offerings that go past that. And you just trust God with what you have. And you give him whether it's little or much, you know, little, much is little when God is in it, right? You know, and so what we do is just we're faithful with that. And we trust God with the tithe. Second Corinthians 9, 7 says, each of you should give what you've decided in your heart heart to give. It should be a heart thing. It, the, 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 it's the why you give. You know, it's your motivation to give. Um, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. You know, the joke is that God will take from a grumpy giver as well, but I'd rather you be cheerful and giving. That cheerful means you're just, it's not mine anyway. We just laugh at God. You do what you need to do. See, 90% with God's blessing will go further than 100% without. I truly believe that. And so let's continue to give. And this year, 2024, let's, let's give more than we ever have given before and trust God. And maybe you've never given before. Maybe you haven't been able to tithe before, whatever the reason may be. I challenge you to just challenge God in that area of your life. Say, God, this is something you want me to do. Just give me, just help me step out in faith and let God just bless you the way only he can bless you with that. The first of the day, seek God. The first of the week, worship God. The first of the month, the tithe. And the first of the year, something we practice around here is we fast. Danny, the January, uh, January 22nd through the 31st, we're, we're doing a 10-day Daniel fast. So we'll be talking more about that. And Pastor Gerald's going to bring a great message on that in a few weeks on fasting and really what it is. is a spiritual concept. 
And maybe you're familiar with fasting. You, maybe your doctor has told you to fast or you have to go get blood work. So you're supposed to fast the night before, whatever. And fasting truly is it's just substaining from, in this way, what we're talking about, uh, something physically, uh, could be food, it could be something else. And we replace it with spending more time with God. And so it's really, because we depend so much on food in our lives. Our, our lives focus around food. We hang out by eating food. We go to the restaurant to meet up with somebody. We, you know, it becomes such a lifestyle part of what we do that fasting really takes those moments and it's not focused on the food, but it's focused on who we are with. And Galatians chapter five, verse 16 to 17. So it says, so I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. See, our flesh and our spirit are often in conflict with each other. It's the sinful nature and then the Holy Spirit working in our life. And so our sinful nature is in conflict with the Holy Spirit often. And so when we fast, it's actually allowing the Holy Spirit to, to, to go into areas of our life that we haven't had victory in perhaps, or that we're holding back and not truly giving to God. It allows us to hear God better. Maybe there's a decision in your life that you're trying to make. You're seeking wisdom. And God, what, what will, what what, what do you have for my life? And fasting often puts us in a place where we can hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us and guiding us and to leading us because our flesh is at conflict. If you don't understand that today, your flesh is at conflict with your soul. You know, that sinful nature is, is still fighting against what the holiness that God has for you, what he has been intense for you, which is the best thing possible. It's at conflict. Joel chapter 1 verse 14 says, So declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord your God, and cry out to the Lord. So some of us need to declare a holy fast. You know, and I encourage you, that's why we do this every year as a church. We do the Daniel fast. And 10 days we set aside as a church and we fast and we pray and we ask God to speak to us. And, and we kind of take the year that way by coming out of a fasting state, by drawing ourselves closer to God. And it's a discipline. It's a discipline to say no to some foods that you really enjoy eating. And it's changing, you know, some of that. And so it's, it's, it's a little uncomfortable. It's taking you out of that zone that you're so used to you know it's, it's it's finding recipes that you've never cooked before it's you know it's, it's it's some planning and preparation but truly if we wanted to succeed in our spiritual life because you know maybe you've been spiritually apathetic and you know where you really have a non-existent spiritual life or it's been so inconsistent or you've been consumed and you want to continue to be consumed well it really all takes intentionality and so we do need to prep and plan. I, I encourage you to find your rhythm that God has for you. Intentionally spend time with God. Finding a place in your house that becomes your prayer room. You know, uh, uh, some call it their war room because there's a spiritual battle taking place. A place where you can be found praying and spending time with God. And when we find those places and, 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 and we make it sacred and we make it intentional and we make a spiritual habit out of it, it changes us. And we move from being spiritually apathetic to spiritually inconsistent to spiritually consumed on fire for God. Keeping the main thing, the main thing, seeking first the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6, verse 17, 18 continues and talks about fasting. It says, so when you fast, Put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not become obvious to men that you are fasting. See, fasting is not a, hey, look at me. I'm a spiritual hero, warrior, because I'm doing this. And I'm so, no, it's really, it's, it's between you and God. You know, we, we do as a church and, and we pray for each other and we hold each other accountable, but this is not a badge of honor that we wear. It's something that we're going to do spiritual battle with God and we're fasting and praying together. It says, so only your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Our reward doesn't come from those around us saying, oh, great job. Our reward comes from God saying, hey, you've drawn closer to me. I see your heart. I see what you're going through. And it allows us to hear his voice even better. But the first of the day, seek God. First of the week, 
worship. And I encourage you in worship to be the loudest, the most active participants in worship here. Don't worry about anyone around you and what they may think. You just lead the way in worship and let God just speak through you. Be excited about the change that's taking place in your life because that change can only come from God himself and what God is doing for you, what he's going to continue to do for him, to worship, to worship him with all your hearts. I encourage you with the first of the month to tithe, to give, and trust God with that, you know, and then and I encourage you the first of the year to fast, to spend time with God. And you're like, hey, I can't do a physical fast, I, you know, I dietary restrictions as it is and so on. Well, there's other ways we can fast. Some of you need to fast from social media. You're letting the real dictate, you know, what's on your feed and, and you're, you're just feeling and consumed with anxiety and worry about everything that's passing. Some of you maybe need to turn off the TV and fast from that for a little bit. So, you know, and Netflix and, you know, just needs to go and it needs to go chill for a bit, right? Like we need to be able to maybe fast certain things in our life. And those things that are keeping us from spending time with God the way we need to spend time with God. You know, and developing the relationships, life is better together that God has for you. And get involved in the small group, you know, in our regroups, or get involved in the community more, and involved in serving on our dream team. What has God called you to do this year? Are you been spiritually apathetic in 2023? Well, we can change that. But it takes you to be willing to change it. Were you spiritually consistent? Well, you can get more consistent, but you're going to be intentional doing so. Were you spiritually consumed? Well, keep it going. Keep that fire burning. And we do so by putting these practical principles into place. Fasting is not just a physical discipline. It can be a spiritual feast. Come on, let's feast today. It's not just a spiritual or physical discipline. It can be a spiritual feast. And so the main thing, the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. The main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. So put God first in everything you do. Put him first in everything you do. So what's your first step to put God first in your life today? What specifically will you commit to this week? How are you going to keep the main thing, the main thing? Let me pray with you today. God, thank you for all you do for us. I pray that we can keep the main thing, the main thing, and seek you first. Be able to spend the first part of the week in worship with you. Be able to trust you with our tithe, with our offerings, Lord. Be able to spend time in fasting and putting some things in this world aside so we can hear and receive more of you this year. I pray a special blessing over all those who are watching and listening today. I pray just for physical healing for some, Lord, for some financial wisdom and discernment for others, Lord. Pray for some relationships to be healed, Lord, today. Thank you for all you do for us. I pray we can honor you, Lord. I pray that this is going to be the best year ever as we continue to seek you first. Lord, I pray we continue to reach Sullivan County for you, reaching one person at a time. Thank you for your love. And thank you for all you do for us. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Hey guys, thank you again for joining us today. If you're watching and you don't have a church home, we call home, but we'd love to invite you to come visit us at our, our church here, 13 Liberty Street. You can find out more about us at freechurch.tv. And if you're watching and you really, you would say, I'm not sure if I believe in Jesus or not. I'm not sure what that means. Love for you to check out rechurch.tv slash follow Jesus. Again, that's rechurch.tv slash follow Jesus. And we'd love to walk with you on your first steps in your spiritual journey. Thanks again for joining us. God bless you guys. Have a great week.